Ah, hey guys, welcome back. So here's the Steam Winter Sale in Action. Aren't you, aren't you happy? Aren't, aren't you thrilled? Uh, isn't this just the best thing to see? Oh my god, and it's changing automatically now. Oh, this is, this is great. So it looks like they're trying to bring the Steam Sale online, but like everything else Steam does, they fail. <laughs> And you know what? I'm not even angry about this because I, I told the, you know, I told all and sundry, I said, you know, I don't even know if I want to spend money on games. I have over 200 games, but, you know, this is just kind of an example of how stuff can go wrong in life. And for me, this is a pretty minor example because I'm not in an all fire hurry to get to the cell, but we can talk more about that after this. Okay, guys, welcome back. So by the time I had made the little video part before this, you know, and I went back to try again because I sometimes take 20 or 30 takes, of course the Steam cell fixed itself. But I'm sure quite a few people flipped their shit, and I don't blame them. If it was the one thing, the one thing you were looking forward to in 2020 and it wasn't going off the way planned, I get it, and there's nothing more than the rage of running into the cell and it won't let you put stuff in your cart or something else. I actually did actually skip it, and I'm going to wait until, you know, later today and then I'll go in. Because it's not like there's door busters. It's not like, oh, we all have to get in there all at once and get our stuff or it's going to sell out. It's a cyber copy, you know, it's a digital copy of it, rather. It's it's never going to run out. It's not like there's limited stock. It's not like there's doorbuster deals. And if there are, who cares? They'll go on sale again. Just wish list it like we all do. And um, what had happened last night is I was really sad and really depressed up to the point where Loki got pissed off of her government. And he says, I'm taking you shopping. And he said, I know it's really hard for you to do. And he has sometimes told me he thinks humans have intelligence level of dogs. And I nodded and said, yeah. He says, stop looking at the government to solve this problem. Now, he's not saying, you know, that I'm being lazy and wanting a handout. But what the government should do in this situation and what they're going to do are going to be two vastly different things. He says, stop looking at them and depending on them. I'm working this out. Me, Loki, we will work it out somehow. So he did indeed take me shopping. We bought her batteries, which we bought double pack. So <laughs> we don't have the money for this. But he's like, this is, we will be okay. And and so we got her double pack of batteries, which means she will probably run till May. Because you can see she's doing her, I'm sorry, my nose is itchy. She's doing her dance of low batteries. So batteries last her about three weeks. Because didn't we just energize her at the beginning of December, I believe. So yeah, fresh, brand new, top of the line batteries don't last her too long. We tried replacing her with one of the other cats that they're a decade or so newer and they run a lot better. And she's just the showboat. She's the pretty one. She's the one that gets all the compliments. Her only replacement now, honestly, would be Mr. Hiddles. Um, the one we were calling that I was going to call Punk Rear Nickel or Honkers, Honkers lost his voice. Honkers lost his voice even on full battery. So Honkers doesn't have a voice anymore. Remember he did that haw thing? <laughs> he lost his voice. Um, and Gandalf never works. So, you know, she has no replacements now. She knows it. And she's like, hmm. So, yes, baby. See, she knows. So she's been running all day long is what she does. When her batteries start to go down, a lot of older electronics will do that. They'll keep running. Check on them every so often. Make sure they're not getting super hot. Pro tip. Yeah. We had a um, Furby last month start to make sounds like the gates of hell had just opened. <laughs> and it was overheating. And it just starts screeching the satanic death well. And I go in there and I'm looking at it like... Those fucking things are haunted. Um, so, you know, do do check on them if they're running down. But, you know, originally the video was going to be about getting anger. You know, getting angry. And, you know, if people flip their shit over that cell, I don't blame them. And it's okay to get anger and angry and get anger. I, I speak of the good English. It's okay to get angry. It's okay to get angry with yourself because, like, I just fucked up speaking basic English. It's okay to get frustrated, you know? It's okay. And it's okay to have anger over things that are going wrong. You know, it is. And the best thing to do is go sit with your anger. 
instead of coming on today and doing what I used to do, which is make a shouty video, which every so often might still happen, I went and I sat with my anger. I watched some YouTube. I cooked some meals. Well, one meal, but I cooked those noodles and long story, boring story, not so short. Make a soup with the, you like make them in the microwave and then it's supposed to throw the water out? No, I make like a little soup with that with soy sauce or something. So I did that and I made some iced tea and I made some coffee and I sat with my anger and I thought about things and the things in my past I get angry about, I'm always going to get angry about those things, but I just need to take the time from time to time to sit with the anger and acknowledge and honor the anger because it's a gift from our primate ancestors. Usually they solve things with violence and rocks and we would love to do that. We can't do it anymore, but it is a gift. You get angry when you get hurt and you've been mistreated. Have you ever watched slightly more civilized um, monkeys or apes other than chimpanzees because chimpanzees just flip into violence but have you ever watched ones that you know there's always that one timid monkey that is always grooming everyone else and always seeing to everyone else's needs and nobody sees to their needs and they finally flip their shit and then the other monkeys are like oh well, hold up I guess we should you know not be such self-entitled assholes and then they get groomed right and, and the thing is, that can lead to chronic issues of us finding out that, you know, we're really pretty quiet and we're really pretty passive, especially if we grew up in abusive households. And we only get attention if we flip our shit, if we are like hysterical or we're angry or something else. And, you know, I was thinking about, and I was thinking, well, that's part of where my problem comes from because all the women, it is a genetic thing, runs in the women. In both sides of the family. Now you could say is that nature or is that nurture or is that the society whatever it still runs in the women in my family. Um, and we all get stressed out during the holidays because we have this bullshit a box idea that the holidays should be wealth and abundance <laughs> and we're sitting there without wealth and abundance and we feel like failures and that, that that's the other thing I wanted to talk about. It's okay to fail. It is fucking okay to fail. I grew up in a household where failure was unacceptable, and I can't tell you how stressful that was, and it's probably why I have half the illnesses I have today. Um, because, you know, I had a doctor once look at my mom and I, and I, I know I've told you this before, and say, you two are like soldiers that have been through a war, and we're like, yeah, how about that? Um, you know, you can go through so much abuse. My brother was pretty horrifically beaten by my dad, and my dad slapped me around, and, you know... Um, my mother had her own, de well, I shouldn't say demons, my mother had her own problems to deal with as well. At least my mother tried to get a handle on her problems. My father's nice switch didn't flip until he had, um, went into a coma and then had to struggle with cancer and all of a sudden he was a decent human being. But, you know, you, you are going to have problems in life and you're going to have issues in life. And where the fuck was I going with that? I fucking lost it. But... You know, I grew up, yeah, I grew up in a home where you couldn't fail, and that's not realistic. You fail all the time. I I didn't have a good childhood, obviously, and I never really learned to fail, and I never learned, you know, to make my own choices, even into adulthood. I had very overreaching parents that, you know, even you're a grown-ass adult, and they still won't let you, you know, make your own decisions, and if you were brought up in an abusive household... That goes on, and then all of a sudden you're an adult and you have no adult coping skills because you were kept kind of in that juvenile state. So it was really fun to hit the ground running as an adult, and you're allowed to be angry at that. And you can have the anger and sit with it, and you're allowed to fail, because especially if you were kept way too long in that adolescent state, some people are pissed off at religion for that, which they have a valid point. Um, toxic version of religion will keep you in adolescent state forever. Um, but, you know, a toxic family can do that too, and you're allowed to be pissed off, and you're allowed to get mad, and you're allowed to have days where you go sit with your anger for a few hours, or a few days, whatever it takes. Have an angry day, punch a pillow, you know, kick a Nerf ball around, whatever, just don't hit people and don't destroy property. That's like, you know, as I was watching various videos and being angry, this therapist is like, you know, anger's great, anger's great, anger is how we stick up for ourselves, but, you know, don't destroy property and don't hurt people and don't hurt animals so don't destroy your shit 
And I, as I'm, I'm listening to her, it reminded me of all the years of therapy that I kind of blocked. And I'm like, well, one, no wonder I went through therapy because I grew up in a fucked up family. And two, you know, no wonder I developed depression and anxiety because family. But, you know, it didn't, it wasn't like my depression went, oh, you figured it out, ran away, or my anxiety. But it did feel like a burden lifted off of me. And I thought, you know, I was never allowed to express anger, and therefore I got the most horrible temper. You know, as a child and as a young lady, I used to throw stuff and everything. I'd go and fall into these rages. Well, yeah, because I was brought up in an abusive household and nobody ever stepped in and said that's not okay. So, of course, I got anger management issues. But it's okay to fail. And I, I've told you all guys the horrible stories of how bad and abusive my parents got over failure. Mostly my dad. My mother did try to get her shit together. I will give her that. And she wasn't, you know, very much help when my dad would go into a rage, but she did what she could. Excuse me. But a lot of us grew up thinking we can't fail. Well, one, fuck the people that told you you can't fail. Failure, especially if you were a scientist, every time you failed, you'd be excited because it would be one more thing that wasn't right, and you would eventually find the right thing. You would eventually find the right thing. Like, for these vaccines, they were borrowing, remember, they were borrowing people's computers, like the background usage and everything else. You could sign up for that and everything else. Because it takes years, it usually takes over a decade, 10 to 20 years of research to come up with an effective vaccine. This one moved blindingly fast. I'm thinking the gods were at work here. And, you know, what else happened is that Odin took me aside because Odin was so worried about me. And he said, look, <laughs> he was kind of mad, but he said, look, he wasn't mad at me. He was mad at, like, life, people that come on and make rando comments the unreasonable expectations of every religion from Catholicism to Satanism of you stay in team whatever and you may never go over there ever again. He said, look, and these, I swear to the gods, these cartoons came up and I put them on our Pinterest of a wolf wearing a sheep's clothing. Only he's he looks like a wolf because he is a wolf, but what he really is is a sheep. And he puts his sheep's clothing on and you know, the first cartoon, he's, like, taking it off, and there's, like, all the things people have called him, like, gross and freak and liar and everything else. And he's taking it off, and it's, like, pulling fur and skin off, and he's, like, crying from the pain. I know, <laughs> it's Odin. And then he puts on the, the sheep's clothing again. And, you know, he's really upset, and he's crying. He goes to a bar, and he's like, well, I guess I will never be accepted for who I really am. And the bartender says, what would a nice sheep like you like? And now you could have taken that to read for anything. You could have taken it to read for gay rights, transgender rights, whatever. But um, he's like, you really get this, this thing of you don't want the Catholic Church. I can tell you that right now because I know you'd like to set them all on fire. <laughs> And you don't want the Catholic faith, but, you know, you you want would be the first person to stand up and punch somebody in the nose if they said anything bad about Jesus. <laughs> and he says, you you go into this morning if you lose the idea of angels or saints or God in that. And he said, I think they're fucking useless, and I think, I don't understand why you want to go over there, but as long as you can keep away from the fucking horseshit of the church and you can keep away from all the dogma, which is the hard part, you know. He said, go, go do what you want, because you're obviously one of my wolves, and fully one of my wolves, and yet you keep looking over there like, Rrr. he said, I, I, I can't stand to see you like this anymore. And he says, if any one of those demons complains to me, or Lucifer or Satan complains to me, I'm going to kill them all, and you can watch, honey. And, <laughs> and the demons are like, we just wanted her to be happy. We were telling her she never could go back. We were just trying to keep her happy. And Odin's over there roaring that if I have to go to Catholic Church and become a nun, I'm going to do it because I'm one of his wolves, and I'm going to be kept happy. And he doesn't care how dumb the decision is. It's my decision. And <laughs> And everybody else stay away. So, you know, Odin has his good points. So he helped last night. Loki took me shopping. And I said, Loki, where the fuck are we going to find the money for this? We don't got this money yet. Um, and you would swear American government's run by crackheads because, and by the way, Loki's like, just have faith. 
so it'll come from somewhere out of the blue. I don't know. But, you know, we went and we got what we wanted. And he said, just just have faith. I got pizza? Back here? Maybe? I don't know. Wait a minute, buddy. Hey, it is it is 3 o'clock. I can call. Maybe. I, we ordered a pizza, baby. Where's this money coming from? I got, I don't know. We'll see. Anyhow. Anyhow. Um, Loki took me shopping, which, you know, don't fall in depression just to go shopping. Odin sent me those things, and I just kept getting tons and tons and tons of pins. And then I woke up today, and I just felt <sighs> because it's rainy outside and everything. And we went out a couple times, including at 3 in the morning to try to see the, the Norse, whatever the hell, star, you know, the conjunction. We didn't see it, but they said you could have went out the night before, which I wish I'd known, or the night after, so we could try again tonight. Even though it's fucking raining. God damn this state. <laughs> um, you know, it's okay to get to get angry. It's okay to get sad. And it's okay to get upset. And it's okay to be pissed off at injustice. We're supposed to be. And sometimes the best thing to do is to sit with those feelings. To sit with those kind of feelings like that. And, you know, if you fell at something, fine. We all fell at stuff. Um, what the fuck did I do this morning? I did wrong. I did something wrong this morning. I... I went to do something and I did it wrong. We fell all the times. I, I, I grew up in a house where that wasn't acceptable, but that's part of life. Failure is part of life. It's why God put erasers on pencils. So it's totally okay to fail. It's totally okay to think you have everything together religiously or spiritually or however the hell you look at it. And then some rando on the internet makes a comment or writes an article and you just fall into a pile of goo and everything is broken and everything is wrong. And you don't know why. It's because it was barely holding together in the first place and it was bound to break and that's just what broke it. It's, it's okay, guys. It's okay. We live in a predominantly Christian world with a very toxic view of what Jesus is because the fundies won't shut their fucking mouths. And it's okay then to be confused because maybe you had a very nice experience with Jesus and he wasn't the ass clown they make him out to be. <laughs> I get woo Becker. It's okay to always run in circles and get the Jesus crazies if you're a pagan. I will tell you that right now. You're allowed to do whatever you want that works for you spiritually. And there's no right or wrong answer. It's not like at the times where I've totally given up on say God or Jesus that the Satan has said, Oh, I'm getting you a gift basket right right here and Omaha steaks. It's not like the times that I've made tentative contact that Jesus said, I was waiting for you, here are six Big Macs. He knows I use good examples. But you know, I'm using silly examples because it's not like that happens. It's not like any spiritual path I've taken then money fell out of the sky or vacation or something like that. It doesn't work like that. And I was talking to God last night and I said, you know, if this is so, because there's this guy that everybody knows he makes up his stories and I won't say the channel, but everybody knows he lies and makes up the stories because he did the elevator ritual once and pretended it was real. Yeah, he, everybody knows he writes these stories and makes them up. I made up a story, and I knew it was made up because I don't care what version of God you worship. There's no version of God that will ask you if he should kill your neighbor. There's just, there just isn't. <laughs> that son of Sam territory is what that is. And just telling you that, you know, the rest of the story is horseshit, right? Like, if God's asking you if he should kill the neighbors, yeah, you, you need therapy. Honey, you really do. Um, But, you know, <laughs> Loki's like, yeah, but should I? Go ahead, I don't care. <laughs> no. If if God's asking you if you're going if he should kill the neighbors, you know, that that's a that's a red flag right there. But anyhow, the story was this guy was going to college and he's being told common sense fucking advice, like you should get student loans because you're poor as fuck and you should be trying to go through school by hard work, which he was doing, and he had a boss that was saying, Oh, we we have to do it this way because we live in the fucking real world, okay? And he had a dream about that boss keeping them all in a cave, and he climbed out of the cave, 
and he climbed into the light and then he just he woke up and he said some kind of prayer about i'm giving everything to you god and giving you all my worry which is fine you can pray that prayer to anybody you can go pray to a rock for all i care i go Ooh. um i got hey because some of the call me have rock representations i am sorry um you know but you can go pray to anything you can pray to my hat for all i care I go, yeah. and you know um the call me you're gonna get me after this the thing is because he prayed this prayer and he handed over all this trouble, then suddenly God appears to him and he <laughs> should start worrying right now, but this God come to think of it and asks if he should kill the boss or not. And, and, and should he let him live? It, it, should he let him live? And he says, well, what kind of life is he going to have? And if he lived through this thing, he was going to burden his family but if he died the family would be better off i'm like what kind of fucked up version of christianity is this nobody would be better off if, no family would be better off if you died trust me and basically he thought that him sharing this worldview with his boss that you can just choose not to live in this moldy old cave and just climb out of it and pray to god and all of a sudden all of a this money came through or something you know it, it was weird i i i don't know what the hell happened maybe he went on the student loans i can't remember anymore anyhow you have to pay that shit off trust me i've been paying it off for decades anyhow the boss had a heart attack and that's when god asked should he kill him or not or let or should he let him live but <laughs> it amounts to the same thing because it's basically god asking you do you want this person to die or not don't ask me like that don't put that temptation in front of me Anyhow, it, it was bullshit in a box, but I, I was probably trying to make a point with that. Goddamn, if I can remember. Uh, bullshit in a box. Climbing out of a cave. I don't know. I, I don't fucking know today. But uh, uh, to recap, the steam cell is on. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be frustrated. It's okay for the steam cell to be fucked up. I think we'd all be sad if it wasn't. It's okay to be you. It's okay to be imperfect, and it's okay to make mistakes, and it's okay to fail on a daily basis. And <laughs> I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.